In this video, I'm going to introduce the basics of creating a particle system in the Unity game engine. To start with, you're going to have to add a particle system to your game. You can do this by coming into the hierarchy or going under game objects, either one is fine, and right clicking and choosing an effect and you want to find particle system. When you add a particle system to the game environment, one thing to point out is is by default, it's going to start playing once you start working with it. Now also as well, whenever you're working with a particle system, notice that it includes a default option here for you, as far as kind of having this default snowy effect going on. Also, when you have the particle system active, notice in the no right hand corner here of your scene area, you're going to have an option here as far as some of the basic options for controlling. One of the big things you might want to use is stop. While it's neat and it's important to use and see the particle system in action when you're editing it, if you're working on other parts of your game, you may not want to just have the particle systems playing at all times. This is also a good time too, just to show you that this is what the icon looks like whenever you're working in a scene environment. Now, before we turn our particle system back on, I'd like to draw your attention over to the inspector. In the inspector, this is where you have all of the different options pertaining to particle systems. Now, one nice thing that Unity does is if you're not sure what something does, you can actually hover over the word and it will give you a brief overview of what that tool will actually control for you. Particle systems are very in-depth and I encourage folks that you can go through and play with a lot of different elements here. Now, a couple of things to point out, though, as far as some of the commons that you may want to work with. I'm going to go ahead and hit play on the particle system. Number one is looping. If you have looping enabled, the duration really isn't that big of a deal. But if I turn off looping, and then I go ahead and restart, you can see my playback time is syncing up to the duration. And then it is stopping at the five second marker. Normally, you do want to leave looping on. Now, some other things too that you may want to change is as far as the start speed, also as far as the direction is concerned. So if I really, really take this up here, you see how I'm getting a much flyer, faster flying particle system. As I take down the start speed, where I can even almost take it to kind of a crawl here, where it's kind of more just in mass. Now, a couple of other things that you can do too that are kind of nifty is you can flip the rotations of your particle systems where they're actually starting out upside down. Or you can change the angle and you can see now how I actually, on my edges here, how it's kind of tilted, you can actually change the start rotation, or you can just keep it as is, as the default. Another question I often get asked by students is how on earth can I change the color or the way that my particle system looks? The default's great for things like snow or fog, but what if I want to have different colors? Within the base of the overall particle system here, you actually have a start color option that if you just click on the bar, you can come in and change the color. This is a great way that you can get started with particle systems and not have to worry about as far as the changes. Now, if I go ahead and minimize particle system though, and I'm gonna pause this a second, you're going to see that you have a lot of sub options here as far as the particle system itself you know that a sub option is active because of the check mark next to it. You can have as many as you like active and you can also turn some off. So to give you a for instance here, if I go under shape, it's actually showing me the shape of the overall output of the particle system. By default, the particle systems go to a cone. I can also change as far as the overall angle of my cone, or if I wanna keep the spread a little bit tighter here, more like a cylinder. I can also change as far as the radius to almost make like a turbine or the end of a rocket. And then also as well, 
I can change as far as where it emits from. Likewise, you will have additional options like this if you were to choose one of the other items here that you have. And you are encouraged to play with each of them and kind of test drive them. So now if I restart, you see I'm a much tighter, almost smoky-like texture effect. The last question I normally get right out of the gate whenever I'm demonstrating particle systems is, well, what if I want to make my own particles? To do that, that's actually going to be controlled under the renderer option. If I click on renderer, notice I have a material option right here, and right now I have it set to a default particle system. The first thing you're going to have to do, and I cover this in another video, is create a particle system graphic in a program such as Photoshop or GIMP. So you can actually see here I've already done that, and I've saved it as a PNG. You will want it to have a transparent background. So what I'm going to do here is I am going to create a brand new material by right-clicking and choosing Create Material. Now I'm going to call this M underscore particle. But similar to things such as skyboxes, I can't just use the standard shader. I'm actually going to need to select and set a specific particle shader. So to do that, while I have my new material selected, I'm going to go up under the standard and click on the drop down. And if you'll notice, I have a section specifically for particles. If I go ahead and click on that, I'm going to go ahead and choose just standard surface. Now, you have several options here. First off, similar to the, its material counterparts, as far as if you're applying a material to an object in a game, you're going to come to Albedo, click, and apply your particle. The thing is, though, we don't want this to be opaque. Instead, what we want to do is we want to do a fade. That way, Unity is going to come in, look for the shape, and actually the fact that you didn't have a background, it's going to remove the background as well. The only other advice I have whenever you are making a material like this, if you're going to use it in a particle system, is I would make sure that because it's a plane-based environment, which means that it could be one-sided, make sure that it's two-sided. That way, no matter what direction your user is looking at the particle system from, they're going to see the actual particle. And once you've done that, you can now come back in and select your particle system. And coming back under that renderer option, you're going to locate the material where it says default particle. I'm going to click on my option bullseye and choose the new particle system. And now, whenever I play through, it's a little hard to see here, but you can see that I now have a whole new particle system with a whole new different set of options. So there we go. I did have to make some edits just because I have that slower start speed as far as my spread and also the cone was a little bit tight there. So I needed to come in and change out as far as my shape a little bit and also as well, maybe if I change out the radius a little bit more. There we go. So you can really see those particle systems appearing.